Hi everyone, my name is Leah. In the last tutorial, I showed you how to 3D model a rose using Cinema 4D and Redshift. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to rig and animate a rose using the Pose Morph tool inside of Cinema 4D. If you like this tutorial, please hit like and subscribe. Thank you so much, and I hope you find this useful. Leave any questions or comments down below, and I'll see you in Cinema. So last time I showed you how to 3D model this rose, and this time I'm going to show you how to animate it using the pose morph. The pose morph is used in even rigging characters, but for right now we're just going to use it for making this flower bloom. It's a ton of fun. So we're going to go under rigging tags and find pose morph. And you'll see that all of our attributes pop up down here. And down here where it says mixing, this is the data that the pose morph is going to record when we make changes. And that'll be the pose we can morph in and out of. And if you forget to select something now, it's very hard to go back and fix it. So I'll try to select everything now. So first I'll select position and it'll throw a new pose in here. I'm going to name this pose bud because this base pose is when it's fully bloomed. I'll go back and hit basic. I'll select points because we'll want to be able to edit that hierarchy. So the hierarchy lets me make changes to everything down here and it will be recorded in this pose morph. So it records everything in the hierarchy, rotation, scale, parameters, UV. The next thing I want to do before I start moving these petals and morphing them is I want to go and add a material tag by right clicking and selecting material tag, pin material. And for this tag, what this tag does is it records the texture on these individual petals. So we have a little bit of turbulence on these petals. And if you'll notice, we don't want those to change as we morph this. So pin material is very helpful in preventing that from happening. I'll add this to each one of these groups. I'm going to select all of these pin materials and hit record. So now we've recorded our textures and if we morph them, it won't change them. The first group of petals I'm going to edit will be the center ones. I'm going to start from the center and work outwards because I think that will be easier. Now that I have this center layer selected, I'm going to click this icon down here that says point level animation and what that'll do is allow us to animate the points within our petals so that's very important because we're going to be morphing these so with the bud selected and under the the rose petal i'm going to select our points Going to side view, select all of them. Hopefully that's all of them. If it's not, we'll correct it. And I'm going to scale this in nice and tight and small. And press E to move it in. T is for scale, E is to move. And then I will scale in the circle that they're cloned across to make it nice and tight. So that's the beginning of our flower blooming. And now you can get a better idea of what the pose morph actually does. So under our pose morph, I have the bud selected. So you can see that it's affecting right now the points of that center layer of the rose. 
if I take down the strength, you can see it slowly takes away that pose. It's at full strength. It's in that position we just put it in. And when it has zero strength, it's in the original base pose. And this just gives you so much control over your animation. It's incredible. I love the pose morph. It's one of the best tools in Cinema 4D. Actually, there's so many tools that I think are the best tools in Cinema 4D. So maybe don't take my word on that, but it's a really great one. So here we are. We have the first layer done. Now we just need to do the rest. So I'll move on to this next group. This is a second layer. I'm going to scale this down a little bit using T for transform. And then I'll grab the petal, edit the points on our petal. Bring these in flatter. Scale them in this way. I'm going to speed this up a little bit because it's going to take me a little while to edit each one of these layers. So I'm going to speed up this tutorial and I'll meet you once I have all of these edited. So now we can see a nice preview since I've created each one of those layers of the flower blooming. I like how this looks blooming. I want to make some changes to this right here. To the points. So what I'm trying to create here is if you look at rosebuds, you'll see that they have these small little leaves. They look like around the um, base of the bud. So that's what I'm working on creating.
So the final step is to create some keyframes. Don't forget to hit animate. Um, you have the option of edit and animate, so make sure you click the button to go back into animation mode. If you want, you can pull this out to affect it in here so you don't have to each time click on the tag. You can have it in your viewport if you'd like. If you hold down control, you can move it around. You can also rename it if you'd like. I'm going to keep it Posemorph. So you can actually keyframe it here, but you can also keyframe it under your attributes. At, at the beginning, I'm going to hit this diamond here for keyframing it. And that'll make it 100% strength at the beginning. At the end, I'm going to keyframe it as being 0% strength. So then if I press play in our viewport, you can see the flower opening up in real time. You can also go into animate mode. Click this button here and adjust these if you'd like to change the speed of the animation if we want it to Accelerate quicker at the beginning and then slow down near the end. So that it has a burst at the beginning, you can do something like that. Or you could reverse that and have it have a little bit more of an umph at the end of the, the movement. So it's really up to you, whatever you think best fits your animation. So this is that tutorial. And I made a short animation using this and I edited it using After Effects as an example, just to give you some ideas of what you can do. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can check out more of my tutorials on Ambient 3D Animations. If you enjoyed this, please hit like and subscribe on YouTube. Thank you so much.